All right, and and we are live. What's up, everybody? As uh, people come in, uh, let the people come in, and then I will just be talking about some of the latest happenings, uh, just to get you up to date on my latest content as people come in. It looks like the connection is good. You guys let me know if you can't hear me or if something's wrong and feel free to you know ask any questions in the meantime so uh, one of the things i'll go over is my latest video i don't know if you missed it but it's uh, it's right here it says the the title is the best handstand drill to get off the wall okay and i have the link here i could just post the link in the chat right here this video on handstand so check that out later on and it's basically a exercise called heel pulls where you will get into a back to wall handstand and then just by you gripping the floor with your hands the feet come off the floor and you will float in a freestanding handstand for a moment just from you gripping the floor with your hands. I know that sounds weird if you haven't done it, but it will teach you how, you know, the relationship that your hands play a role in helping you balance. Okay, so that, that is really cool. And um, the other video that I made recently were the top nine exercises to rehab, protect, and warm up your shoulders. Uh, and I will post the link to that in the chat right now. Right now. Hey, Sebastian. Yeah, so um, in regards to the... One second. Let me post this video. Second last video on shoulder rehab. So I didn't know that... I didn't realize that daylight savings time was gonna happen. Oh, I should change this. This is looking crazy. <laughs> okay, there. Um, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize that. Uh, shit, what's going on? Something is playing. Boom. Okay, got it. Sorry, guys. A little confusing. So, yeah, daylight savings time hit. So, for those of you in Europe, I'm streaming one hour earlier than intended. And I had to wake up earlier. I didn't realize how early it was going to be. I, I can't stand this daylight savings time switches, man like one hour like we're basically losing an hour and then it's just i don't know it's great that we get more daylight obviously but it's goddamn annoying having to adjust to this every every uh, twice a year basically so and it's such an outdated thing it's not like saving anyone any energy or anything so i don't know it just goes to show you how how much uh how slow progress is in regards to uh, government action in general like how long does it take for a law to be enacted and then how long does it take for another law to pass to update that previous law i mean decades right so <laughs> it's pretty crazy um other things happening right now is so i've been working on my one arm chin up yeah sebastian says that yes sebastian uh daylight savings is an outdated thing for sure i hope that they stop using it as well in the united states it's even more complicated because every state has its own law so like you could be in the same time zone but like in a different state and then they have a different time one time i went traveling in i think it was in when i was in arizona you 
um, there's Native American land, and the Native American land, the, the reservations there didn't follow daylight savings time. So you can like go 30 minutes, travel like 30 minutes somewhere else, and then all of a sudden the time is one hour different. Uh, it's just like crazy. So anyway, uh, what was I going to say? So I've been working on my one arm chin up, um, one arm chin up basically, which is uh, I've been using this mantle chin up. Uh, where is it? It's like right here is a little demonstration. And it looks like this basically. You see like one ring is lower than the other. And basically this is like one of the easiest settings. And it's basically a really good way to work toward the one arm chin up. And now like the difference between the two rings is huge where like the bottom arm is really straight. And it's I've gotten so much stronger. I'm doing like 18 reps per arm over a few sets. So it's becoming a lot of volume and I'm really happy. I'm really happy that I'm getting so much stronger. You guys, it's just like when you're when you're gonna get stronger like when you're trying to get stronger just be consistent and if you can't work out for like a week or something it's okay just jump back into it don't let like weeks and months go by okay it's very important that you just do a little something to get back into the groove of things and and um, yeah like Recently it was raining so Like because it was raining I didn't work out outside and like I looked at my notes seven days had passed since my last workout, which is a long time for me and you know, I just did my workout yesterday and I'm I hadn't lost any strength and I felt pretty good about it. So, you know, don't let a little bit of a a delay in your schedule throw you off and uh, hey mr. dark says hey how are you I'm good thank you it's a little early in the morning or it feels very early it's foggy outside and all that but it's nice oh, and we recently got like two feet of snow so I can't wait to go skiing on Monday uh, we have a nice uh, snow in our local mountains just an hour away so that's pretty good by the way if i if you guys don't hear me well um let me know i think my mic is good yeah so what was i saying um another thing uh, i wanted to share is that i've been doing online coaching a lot more so if you go to my website and then you just go about and then online coaching and then you'll find more info there about it but basically i have so many clients right now i never had so many clients working concurrently with everybody else so if you want to get on a video chat session with me and get like um you know customized information like help optimize your current re routine or start create like a whole new routine um that is a really good option to help save you time do you could send me form check videos email support and it becomes like a conversation an ongoing conversation to help speed up your progress and help you reach your goals whether it's like movement related or overall um, nutrition or anything you know like physique aesthetics whatever your goals really are and it's been very gratifying helping people on a one-on-one -on -one basis because you know I love teaching and I love helping others so this has been a really good way to go about it so check that out if you haven't already and yeah let's see the chat arrow says uh, thanks for all the resources going to try a follow along yoga session today very good let's uh, let's bring up the yoga session stuff so I have this, uh, I made this playlist if you go on my channel and it says uh, top 10 follow along yoga videos. 
I'll link that in the chat. Top 10 yoga videos. So in this playlist, like you'll find a bunch of uh, yoga videos that I've made. You know, I've made so many follow along yoga videos. And I even did one of my own videos recently because I've been like trying to find like a good yoga class and there aren't any locally and I keep trying different ones online and I'm like oh, I don't like these teachers like I don't like their style they, they're too slow or they just I don't know I just don't like everyone's style and I'm very picky about my yoga so I ended up doing one of my own videos like it's so funny like I was just like okay listening to myself watching myself <laughs> And doing my own yoga video, which, and I loved it, I guess, because it's, you know, it was my creation and it's my style. So, but I thought, I thought that was really funny. But anyway, there's like 10 videos here, which they all range from like 20 to 40 minutes long. All you need to do is like one of these once a week, you know, you can repeat any any of them and they will still be very productive and help you feel really good and all it takes is half an hour of your time guys it's very important that you get some movement in all right very very important like if you're feeling down in the dumps especially or if you're feeling stiff uh please do that and if you're sitting a lot if you're sitting a lot all day because you know you work for remotely you work from home or whatever get a standing desk I have a motorized uh, desk that I just push a button and it goes down so I could sit I push another button and it goes up and I'm standing I'm standing right now so it's very good to be constantly changing so you're not stuck in a seated position for like you know 12 hours or whatever so um another thing i've been working on recently are my front splits so i didn't have like the motivation to work on the splits for like a few years i just put it off on the back burner and it feels really good getting back into the splits i do have a splits routine even though i could update it and make it better um but if you go on tronic.org slash splits there's a bit of a, a bit of a routine you can you can try hello soham um let's, i'm gonna post this splits routine and i've been working specifically on the front splits and it's it's good my hip extension is better than it's ever been which i'm so happy about and what else was i gonna share um that, that's about it the front splits so i used to think like the front splits were all about hamstring flexibility and not so much about hip extension i'm realizing that the back leg going backwards is even more important than the front leg being flexible uh, so yeah that's a very interesting um interesting position and it'd be awesome to just slide into the front splits one day just for fun you know <laughs> and uh, the Sebastian I think you have a question regarding the shoulder rehab um, you said that your training buddy has a shoulder injury from many years ago and you shared the rehab video with him nice good job man that's good man help help others as much as you can well not as much as you can you got to help yourself first you can't be constantly making other people happy otherwise you'll you will be unhappy you have to take care of yourself first so that you can take care of others right like when you're on an airplane uh you know what they tell you they say uh in an event in a in the in the unlikely event of an in, of a disaster right the air mask things the oxygen things will come down and they don't say like put the mask on your child first they say put it on yourself first and then you know 
your child, right? Because you have to, it's like an analogy, like you have to help yourself, take care of yourself first so that you can take care of others. So I don't know why I said that, but just remember to find that balance, you know? You got to prioritize yourself so that you can do what it is that you're going to do to provide value in this world for others. All right? Um, uh, Michael's asking what kind of width of the rings would you recommend? So there's two, two of them, right? There's like the 1 inch and the 1.25 inch. Um, the wider one is going to be a little easier on the false grip because you have more surface area. However, um, it's not a huge difference between the two. Uh, the wider one is just a little bit easier on the joints overall, is how I feel. And I think the thinner one is the more standard gymnastics style. Um, but yeah, overall, not a big difference between the two. Just get one of them. Don't like overanalyze it too much. <laughs> just make just make sure you get wooden rings. Okay, wooden rings are much superior to plastic rings, and uh, they cost a little more, but they are so much more worth it. The grip is so much better. They feel good, and you know that's the most important part. Is that you know you don't have to use as much chalk. You usually don't even have to use any chalk because the grain of the wood is so good. Okay. So I hope that helps you, Michael. Um, Sebastian's asking, where are you in your front split progress? Um, you know, I haven't measured it exactly, but on either side, it's like my crotch area is like probably six inches from the ground after I'm warmed up. So it's not very far, but the, that last six inches is really where it is. You know that's the part that usually takes the longest so I'm pretty close and if I just work on it consistently I think I'll get there pretty quick I'm not like rushing to get it though you know like you can't like rush mother nature it's kind of like these things are gonna happen in their own time but I can stay consistent Soham, you have a question. Is it okay to train at the same intensity when you come back from a two-week break? Yeah. So what I'll do is I will usually, uh, like let's say I was doing uh, five sets of five reps. Let's keep it simple. Let's say I was doing five sets of five reps at a certain intensity of something, right, of an exercise, and then I took two weeks off. Like normally what I would do if I didn't take that two weeks off is I'll try to do maybe like an extra rep or two. But if I've taken a long break, I will just mimic my previous workout. Okay, and then go from there. It might be of like no difference, uh, which proves to me that I can do it and nothing's really changed. Or... You know, I'll try and like, maybe I can't do it as well by just like one rep or two. Maybe I'll fall short a little bit. But yeah, just try to replicate the last workout that you did. And then you'll probably just do fine. And then just go from there, you know, and just like start, start like increasing things over time. Just like always play the long game. It's always better to play the long game uh, just think like all these little um, workouts that you're doing the whole point of it is like the little each time it's like each time you work out it's adding on a little bit and it's gonna make a big difference in the big picture but little bits at a time right um, let's see uh, Asher is asking, I get, or he says, I get overwhelmed by the amount of information and building the perfect routine. How do you deal with information overload and paralysis by analysis? And that's a good question. So one of the things um, 
you should keep in mind that, that there is no perfect routine. I mean, sure, there is going to be something that gets close to it. Kind of like what I do is when I work with clients is I will ask them like, how much time do you have? Okay, how much time do you have to realistically train every day? Is it going to be ideal? Is your ideal routine like a daily routine? Is it three times a week? Is it four times a week? Is it just like 20 minutes long? You know, you have, or is it an hour and a half long? You have to be realistic with what uh, amount of time is going to be right for you because like one person for them maybe they have nothing to do they don't have a job and they're like 16 years old and they can train like five times a week for an hour hour and a half right but someone else could be like 40 years old with the three kids and realistically they can work out four times a week but only for like 20 minutes okay and so it's kind of like try to see what is ideal for you in regards to time management and you might think you might think that you can do you know an hour five times a week but then like after a couple weeks you start to feel burnt out maybe you know so you might not even know what you actually will find sustainable uh, until you actually do it but like try to like have that little frame of you know time management and then like choose the exercises that will lead you to your goals in the most efficient manner so for example if you like to do a handstand for example put a little bit of handstand work um, I like to like you know have like try to choose like two or three goals try don't try to have like a hundred goals because uh, if you're trying to like have um, if you're trying to like achieve like a hundred different things at once you're not going to achieve them but if you like laser focus on like one goal two goals three goals and you know like keep it like tight and focused you're going to have much more progress on those few things in an efficient manner so try to like really really just like um kind of like think about what your goals are and if you're not sure really what to do like i have the minimal routine if you go on tronic.org slash minimal you know the title says the minimalistic upper body training program that's supremely easy to follow and will make you super strong i'll put a link to this in the description and it's basically just very simple like you choose one pulling exercise and you choose one pushing exercise okay and that takes care of your upper body so that's like just two exercises okay and uh, the rep the rep scheme is like uh, is listed there but like you can also get your legs involved and whatever else so that's just an idea of something that can help get you going if you're really like like just overthinking things and really don't know what to start with right because it's a very basic routine and from that little start at least you can like just start with there and until you figure out what you actually want to do what else you want to add on you know stuff like that so um the most important thing is to just start and just do it because you can just overanalyze and overanalyze and you know it's really hard to figure things out if you're just overthinking it's better to just start doing and then go from there right david asking what's your favorite color um probably blue probably something with blue <laughs> um uh, Sebastian says, uh, regarding taking care of me versus others, I think of myself as an apostle of Antronic. <laughs> I always share your videos when someone is in a situation that can benefit from that. Oh, that's very nice. Thank you, man. Um, Eros is asking, is yoga and skill work such as handstands, planche progression, fall script good enough 
for an active rest day yes absolutely um that is fantastic although planching planching in general is not uh easy planching wouldn't be considered skill work it's straight up strength work so i don't know what you're doing in the planche if you're just doing some planche leans just to like reinforce the position that's cool however um you know yoga is perfect handstands are perfect false grip work that that probably works fine um as long as you're not overdoing it where it's interfering with your actual workout it's cool uh Leso Rex is asking is it fair to describe your outlook in life as a mix of stoicism and buddhism that's a pretty good description i think Although I'm not like entrenched in either of them, it seems to be that the way I go about life seems to be like a good mix of the two, okay? <laughs> uh, Donald's asking, what to do if one feels one shoulder feeling more strained than the other during a push-up? That's a tough question. Without seeing your actual uh, form in person, it's very hard to say what is actually going on take a video of yourself and see what you can glean from that because a video is very 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 helpful you know a video can tell you so much take a video from the side take a video from the top and you know you might need to do like rehab or something like or not a not rehab for, like i have this uh you know this rehab video I put out, which can also be used as a great warm up or maintenance for uh, your shoulders. Maybe you need to just do something like this with a with a band or something to just to like, you know, make your shoulders feel good, and then do your push up. Although a nice thing to do is just do incline push-ups with your hands elevated as a warm-up just to make sure your joints are feeling good and then you move on to your harder push-ups okay so it's really hard to say like what's going on with your shoulders because shoulders are so complicated in general okay um i do have like you know i do have a video on how to do push-ups just type how to do push-ups and my name <laughs> and you will and just like review the that and you will see you know you know you can just compare if you're doing everything right and go from there okay um all right chat's getting a little crowded cool 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 uh nicholas is asking um hi thanks for everything you're welcome when you be, when you began training with rings did you have to back down once in a while uh i've been using them for three weeks and last time i got my shoulder my shoulders got painful for a few days okay yes absolutely i've always had to you know it's an ebb and flow you can't just constantly push 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 you can't push yourself harder and harder and harder eventually you'll break you'll have to like pull back a bit so you know some day some weeks you can push harder other weeks you have to back off like do a lighter workout or just take it off completely so you have to find that balance if you feel any pain at all like if i feel any pain at all i will absolutely just stop i will just stop that session until i'm pain free and like tomorrow's a not another day and tomorrow you know as long as i'm alive will be just another opportunity to train and you always have to think of the long long term um long term effects of your doings right if only i can work out 10 times a, like 10 times a, imagine i can work out 10 times a day and have 10 times the progress but unfortunately you can't you have to allow time for re rest recovery repair all that all, all the things that start with r <laughs> uh, rehabilitation recovery repair they all start with r i don't know why but they just do someone who's a linguist would know why 
but yeah find try to find that balance take breaks whenever you need to and why am i watching myself here here i'll just i'll just have that okay now um jess Scree is asking hey i want to know what do you think of adding weight uh, like a barbell into body weight training do you think it will be necessary at some point or body weight only would be sufficient so adding weight uh, or mixing weights with body weight training is a very good approach and you know like there's nothing superior about weight training or superior about body weight training to the point where you have to do one exclusively or the other exclusively mixing the two can be very effective and whether it's necessary to do it depends on your goals okay like if you want really strong legs doing a um, you know squatting with a barbell or deadlifting with a bar barbell is always going to trump anything with a body weight like any body weight equivalent is going to be very weak compared to a barbell squat or deadlift and the effectiveness and efficiency of a barbell squat or deadlift is unparalleled right to kind of like mimic what a deadlift would take care of what you'd have to like do like five exercises to like mimic it you know while a one that one exercise with a barbell can tackle so many major muscle groups all at once in an efficient manner and you know of course there's other uses of weights in body weight exercises such as doing weighted pull-ups or if you have ankle weights or if you have like a weight vest you know to do push-ups with a vest something like that so there's like there's all sorts of ways to incorporate weights whether it's necessary or not uh, depends on whether there is a body weight equivalent of it like if you're having an issue of increasing the intensity with the, the body weight version that you're doing then it might be very helpful to um, incorporate something with the weights but again it really depends what you are going for most of the time you probably don't need to um, however if you really want to get strong legs you would definitely incorporate barbell training and it would be fruitful in that endeavor also um, we have like a couple dozen visitors here remember to give this video a thumbs up right now so that you know why not you're here if you're enjoying this please do it Oh, look at this. <laughs> cool. Now, uh, let's go to the... Where am I? All right, Ines is saying, uh, I was bedbound for a month due to a chronic illness and I've inev inevitably lost weight and a lot of strength now that i feel better do you have any tips for rebuilding my fitness thank you so much um yes so in general you just want to start doing something right i don't know like what i don't know what you were doing before but try to like get some sort of routine back again i do have like these top 10 follow along yoga videos it's just a playlist i have more yoga videos than this but like Try to just like incorporate a little bit of yoga movement once a week in your life. Other than that, try to do a little bit of strength training. Maybe go on the minimal routine, which is uh, ontronic.org slash minimal, so that you can take care of your upper body. You're, so you'd just be doing some strength training with your upper body, and it doesn't take too much time. So those are the basic, basic stuff. Of course, you could also in, integrate like 
a wrist warm up, if you're going to do like handstand work. Um, it really depends on your goals. But just like go light, go easy, and take notes, have a journal. It's really helpful to have a journal, guys. Just like have, have like, not everything needs to be electronic. Just like a goddamn notebook with a pen. <laughs> just write the date, what you did, how many sets and reps. And then you'll know uh, just by looking at it what you're doing next time right just repeat that and try to exceed your um your reps from before and that right there will just cause like a nice snowball effect of you just trying to like exceed your previous workout okay so it's hard to say ines what else you should be doing but just like eat right Start a little something, start a small routine of some sort, pick goals that motivate you to keep going. And yeah, um, I'm gonna move on now. Let's see here. Uh, da, 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 da. As Asher, hey Asher. Uh, two of my goals are planche and front lever, the classic. <laughs> should I replace rows and push-ups with planche and front lever training or add it on top of the rows and push-ups okay so front lever is a row okay and planche is a pushing a horizontal pushing exercise like a push-up so whenever you say you want to replace um, you know are you going to, if you're going to replace rows with front lever training, it's kind of like, you're not really replacing it, okay? Like, you can build up your front lever just through increasing your rowing strength. And you can increase your planche, uh, your, your, your ability to planche with your push-ups. However, you should be doing like uh, pseudo planche push-ups. I think I have a video on this somewhere uh, da, 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 da. let me find it so do, 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 do. I have videos here so many videos let me find the one I'm talking about where is it Something with push-ups. I think it's the one where the, the thumbnail is like, say no to a hundred push-ups. <laughs> ah yes, this one. How to get mad strong with push-ups, right? So in this video, I basically say, um, I basically say like to do, if you could do push-ups easily, uh, then Okay. Elevate your feet on a chair, right? And if that is easy, can you see this well? Yeah, you can. And if you could see that well, then uh, lean your shoulders more ahead. So let me forward it right here. So notice this red line right here. Notice that my shoulders are going forward. So like a planche. If you're ever going to planche, your shoulders need to be um, far forward to so that the center of gravity stays balanced, right? So um, I'm kind of rambling, but basically do pseudo planche push-ups like this with your feet elevated and your shoulders leaned as far forward as possible so that to help your planche training. So you're not going to just like stop doing push-ups you want to work on the planche working on the planche statically like an isometric static position is not gonna help you get very strong it doesn't have as much hypertrophy effects as um, doing something dynamically okay and same goes for front lever uh, work on rows you can do one arm rows if you got rings you know uh, if and then one arm rows when they get easy you can elevate your feet um and also you can do front lever rows <laughs> and 
Honestly, I found that working on the one arm, the one arm chin up has been helping to maintain my front lever and helping it get better without even like working on the front lever at all. Okay, so uh, I hope that answers your question. I know I kind of rambled on a little bit, but you know, that's what I do. So. Jacob says, hey, uh, just wanted to thank you for all the help you gave to me for free. Your guides and videos are super helpful. Uh, love from California. Thank, thank you and you're welcome, Jacob. Like, much obliged. I appreciate your words and your support. Renan says, I feel lower back pain. Low back pain after sprinting hard. How do you generally fix low back pain? So in general, like, uh, go to my website, ontronic.org slash low dash lunge. But this general uh, hip flexor stretch, I'll just put the link to this in the description and just tag you, Jacob, for low back pain. So like, obviously there's so many ways to fix lower back pain. Oh, and then let me switch back to here. So if you go uh, ontronic.org slash low lunge, you, you will find these two exercises. I mean, it's just a stretch, right? And let me play like, what is the goal of this? The goal is to do a low lunge with 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 you grabbing your opposite with you grabbing your back foot with your opposite hand okay just like that all right and that will help you to um basically when you stretch uh, your your front of your thigh like i can maybe find a ilio so as muscle like basically when you stretch your hip flexors the, these hip flexors connect to your lower back so can you see that let me make sure i'm on the right thing yeah so like the muscles that bring your thighs forward and up connect to your lower back right you see that so like here's another photo so like you know usually so whenever you do this stretch like where is it this one, you're stretching your quadriceps, which are, you know, the muscle, the giant muscles at the front of your thighs. But these muscles, part of the, uh, part of the other muscles, other hip flexor muscles, they're not just your quadriceps, but they're also this iliopsoas complex, which will, which also connect to your lower back. And if this is tight then it will be straining your lower back okay so it's really good to be stretching your hip flexors and the best way to do it is in a lunge like so and of course there's more advanced ways after this but this is like gonna take care of 99 percent of people out there in general and um of course there could be more things that help like a glute stretches hip hip stretches other hip stretches might be helpful but go for like find my yoga videos do those once in a while do those after you sprint do those after you go for a bike ride and it's really nice and um and it's really hard to say like in general like why your lower back is in pain uh, if you have other things going on like if you have a herniated disc or something but in general yeah go for that Donald's asking uh, thoughts on protein supplements and do you take any supplements so in general I don't take any like uh, vitamins or uh, like supplements regularly I used to like take fish oil and vitamins but I and I also used to take protein I still do sometimes uh, especially if I know I'm not getting my protein that day just for whatever reason which is rare nowadays because um, then I'll have like a protein bar is my favorite way, the easiest way to go about it. 
and so the main thing with protein is that like if you are low on protein in general and you are strength training regularly you will have uh you will notice like an increase in recovery if you up your protein okay protein are like the building blocks for repair and recovery of all body processes not just for building muscle but just in general and if you're low on you know your protein intake for whatever reason you can benefit from taking taking something whether it's a protein powder or a protein bar um, there are so many different products and one of these days I'm you know I am intrigued by the idea of selling my own protein supplement because it's like the only so like I hate the idea of just selling something to sell something like like I, I don't like that at all and so that's why the only thing I do promote and sell are things I like truly believe in so like you probably won't see me like selling vitamins you won't see me like selling probiotics because the science in these sure there's like there's benefits I'm sure but I can't full wholeheartedly say you all need to take this <laughs> right but when it comes to protein supplements i do see benefits and there is uh, that is something i might get behind one of these days so in general that those are my thoughts and so next question how deep does a split squat need to be I can ramp up the weight but not sure if I'm doing full ROM so how deep so first of all whenever we talk of split squats make sure the front leg is doing the work a lot of people do split squats mindful mover has a good video on that split squats let me just show you the quick video a lot of people do split squats incorrectly where they will be um putting the back knee down and up when in reality it's just the front foot that's going forward and back okay so back leg is relatively straight and see how far forward his knee goes just go maximally okay just go as far forward as possible that's how deep it should go and so it's not about the back knee going down and up at all it's about the front foot going forward and back and how long you make that stance makes it harder and you don't have to do that maximally you can find the middle ground and then hold weights dumbbells in your hand to help intensify it okay so why am i here let me get out of this okay now uh, Sebastian says I see pure body weight training as simpler than weighted exercises um, that, well, that's interesting uh, so yes it looks simpler um, but so like body weight exercises I feel they require just as much coaching to get right and not just coaching like for a single exercise but coaching more so for understanding the progressions so like how do you go from like uh being able to just do push-ups to a planche right it's not a straight line and that requires a lot more uh expertise and you might need to hire a coach to help you get there but when it comes to weight training you know uh, if you're just squatting let's say right with a barbell and you want to squat your uh, you know double your body weight one day well the whole concept is that you just add little your weight right uh, increase the weight slowly over time so it's kind of like the same exercise but the weights increasing over time as opposed to body weight exercises where you're not just increasing the weight you're changing the body 
position, the shape of the exercise, the leverages are changing. So you, it's like a whole like different flow chart. There's a much more complicated flow chart. So body weight training, um, it's simpler in the sense that you don't require weights, but the pathway to get to your goals is a lot more convoluted. And that's why, you know, if you need any help to get to your goals, definitely take up my online coaching, hit me up, email me. There's a contact form down here. And, you know, we could have one, one session or more of a long-term thing where we go for a few months or weeks or whatever. We do a bunch of video chat sessions. You send me form check videos and I help optimize the routine to help you get to your goals. Um, so, you know, um, let's move on here. Just says, fantastic answer. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, thanks for the thumbs up. Uh, Donald says, uh, you seem to have lost a lot of weight. There's almost no fat on your face. Yeah. I mean, I guess, I don't know, I'm like the same weight, I'm like 170, 172, 172 pounds right now. I was like 180 just like a year ago, but I mean, I don't know, maybe in a year I'll be 180 again, who knows, like weight changes are so like seasonal, like it really doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> um, Donald says you have a billion Chrome extensions. Any uh, any special ones you'd recommend? The most important ones are the U Block, U Block Origin, um, LastPass for your password manager. It's crucial. Um, MetaMask if you use uh, crypto, Ethereum. Uh, the Camelizer is good to see if you have. Uh, if you're buying something on Amazon, what the price is or has been historically to make sure you're getting a good price. And uh, the momentum the momentum extension is also very good. Um, the momentum one is just basically, you know, is this whenever you open a new tab. I don't know why it's like, I don't know why it logged out. But basically, it allows you to keep a to-do list. Let me uh, run through this and you'll see. Done. Okay. So like, what's my main focus for today? Do a live stream, right? And then it becomes like part of your to-do list and you could just keep adding things on. So anytime you open a new tab, your to-do list pops up. So that's kind of like a nice thing sort of so it depends if you use it or not uh let's go back to my page and again if you guys haven't seen the handstand drill video the latest video please do that uh jay dong says uh Antronik is king thanks man <laughs> uh sagrav says uh what do you recommend for getting motivation to get back to working out that's a tough thing man you gotta just like push yourself like you can't just think about it like just think about like what's the alternative right like if you don't oh we have 46 people online everyone give a thumbs up thanks for listening happy sunday to all of you i love all of you thank you so much for your um thank you so much for the support and sorry for the time change i didn't realize the time was changing so the time i gave for europe was different um than the rest of the world so anyway um, <laughs> um uh, in regards to what what do you recommend for getting motivation back to working out so i always think of the alternative what is the alternative if you don't work out what's gonna happen to you you're gonna regress life is a struggle okay life is not easy ever i don't care how rich you are how uh, blessed you are or whatever um like there's always going to be challenges and you're always going to have to push yourself okay there's no like easy ride right and anyone who is uh constantly like acting like they're just uh, i don't know like like life is on easy mode for them i don't believe it okay be skeptical of that 
Because life, life in general, when it comes to your body, you have to be pushing yourself. If you're not pushing yourself, you're regressing. You're kind of like going backwards, right? So you're either like a plant, you're either growing or you're dying, right? So there is no alternative to like, you know, like the motivation to work out. You have to just kind of have forced yourself and the motivation will probably come. Try to associate, like try, remember that every time you do a workout, you feel good after, right? So like you can just go on a hike, right? And you feel good after, right? You can go on a bike ride. You can do a yoga video, right? You can like, there's so many ways to just move your body and just remember that after you do it, whether it's just something for 10 minutes, 20 minutes, an hour, afterwards you feel good. When you start to associate the exercise with feeling good, you have to just keep that up for a couple weeks so that it becomes a habit, okay? So, so just remember, like if you're not working out, you're just gonna feel like shit eventually, right? And it's only gonna get worse. But if you keep at it, just start somewhere, just like slowly like build yourself back up, it gets easier and easier. But like your workout will always be hard if you're pushing yourself appropriately, right? You can't just be doing the same workout and stagnate. Um, you can, but why not spend that same amount of time pushing yourself? Because it takes the same amount of time to do a workout that's the same intensity level versus the uh, a workout that takes the same amount of time, but you pushed yourself a little harder okay because you raise the intensity right so anyway those are i hope that answers uh a bit i think i'm pretty far back in the scroll let me just catch up right now <clears throat> um neha says uh thanks for your videos and content do you have any routines for seniors? I'm thinking of something for my mother who's around 60 years old. That's a good question. Um, it's tough, you know? So, like, I would recommend, the easiest thing I would recommend is, like, find one of my yoga videos, okay? Like, like I'll just post the link to it. Like, this is a playlist of my follow along yoga videos I just posted it in the chat and like try try to like you know do one of them you know this is for your mom and at any point in time if it feels too difficult they can rest okay take a break for a moment like just chill out and then when that pose is done that they couldn't do get back get back join me again you know so just like take a break during whatever parts are too difficult but get back into it as soon as possible okay that's like how you would do any yoga class in general right and you know the best way to find out what they're capable of is just by doing it and my 35 minute yoga video for posture is the first video I ever made and that one is like the classic it's not necessarily the easiest for uh, seniors or anything but like it's it's uh, motivating in the sense that it has a nice view you can kind of see the view in the beginning actually you see like the clouds the clouds in the background there this was my first yoga video it's pretty magical yeah and so we begin with child's pose all right so um i'll just play this while it goes on um Jessica has a couple questions you calisthenic skills you think are necessary aside from handstand l sit oh what calisthenic skills do i think are necessary aside from the handstand and bridge um i can't tell you that that's your personal goal really everyone has like 
like even handstand or else it's might not be necessary it just like depends you know what you want to do like there's no like set rules to life like this <laughs> you know what motivates you like i personally love to the work on the front lever i don't care to gain the planche right to someone else the planche might be the only thing they care about right i'm not gonna tell that person no you have to work on um your bridge or your front lever you know what i mean uh the same way that they can't tell me that you have to have this skill or something you know um anyway and then uh morning mobility routine uh again follow my yoga videos i have the link to it i posted a couple times in the chat room here uh those are fantastic in terms of uh overall like this one video like this playing right now right is this the right way that i'm pointing if i do this no i mean this video <laughs> um, is fantastic for example and it's just like 30 minutes and you'll be good by the way this video is like six years old now isn't that crazy anyway cool still good though timeless shit um, thoughts on the current reddit uh, recommended routine I haven't looked at all the changes that have been happening uh, and a so I'm not sure what to say about it. I know there's many different ones right now. It's a little complicated. I haven't even looked. Uh, any plans to make a podcast? I would love to make a podcast. However, I need someone who is good at interviewing me. Someone is like, like, you know, like whenever you listen to the Joe Rogan program, he's really good because he's always excited and he's asking the right questions that you are probably thinking of so you know if you know if you are that person who wants to interview me <laughs> and go on a podcast with me hit me up um i would love to i would love to just have a podcast on where because a, a monologue like this where i'm just talking to myself is very one-dimensional and boring okay but when you hear a conversation between two people like a dialogue format you can get so much more out in such a different format that's much more fruitful and helpful and i would love to do a podcast but i need that other person there to help you know make that dialogue happen right um so like like for example like the other day i was at the park and i was working out and there were a bunch of parrots like just a bunch of parrots just like a hundred like maybe like hundreds of parrots just storming through and making like the loudest ruckus ever and i was pretty much done working out at that point i was working out on the rings and i was just i had hung it from a tree in a beautiful park and you know the birds were just being so loud and just flying through and i just walked up toward the flock and there was another guy there and um he he was also observing and afterwards you know afterwards the birds passed you know we looked at each other kind of made eye contact then we're like that was awesome you know and <laughs> and like we started just the reason i'm saying this is because we just started to chat and we had such like a fruitful conversation with us it was with a complete stranger that i never met before and it was it's incredible the power of conversation is what i'm trying to say you know yeah like we had, we talked about like deep things like he asked me like if i'm single or married you know and if i'm gonna have kids one day or something you know like you don't ask uh things like that to people you just met but like our energy was flowing in such a way that he felt comfortable asking questions and i felt comfortable answering and asking back right and you know and was, in regards to that question i was like well i think the only point of getting married at this point in this day and age is to start a family uh, which is like the complete opposite of what it used to be right before you would get married 
and then you would have kids. Now we have that, we can afford the opportunity to like think about our decisions and think what we're gonna be doing. <laughs> uh, because like I know like my parents and like all my friends' parents, like they were kind of on autopilot, right? Um, they, they got married in their 20s and they had kids almost like they were on autopilot, right? Uh, they didn't even think to not have kids. Nowadays, we are often thinking like, um, okay, I want to maybe have kids one day, but I want financial security first, right? I want to make more money, have uh, more uh, security and comfort to be able to support this child before I bring the child into the world right but the irony here is that uh, since we want to make for money first and then have kids like the reality is if we have kids first it actually accelerates it catapults us to make that money right like the existence of a child will be like the most motivating thing you would have ever created uh, it'll make you it'll motivate you to achieve success all the faster so if we say we want to make money um, first before having kids it's actually going to take a lot longer <laughs> because you're actually comfortable and you don't have this fire under your ass to support a child right um, but at the same time, you know, I understand, like, we have this, like, um, we can afford the opportunity to, like, think about our actions a lot more than we used to be, you know? So, um, another thing he had asked me, I remember, was, because uh, I'm in my 30s and he was in his 20s. He's like, does life actually get better in, your, in the 30s? And I was like... I, I, I said like a very firm yes <laughs> like because life actually does get much better as you get older because in, when you're young you're not really sure what you're doing with your life you're not sure like you don't have like things figured out you know you maybe you're living with your parents when you're older you you have your own place you know you're cooking on your own you're working out you have your own life you have if you're a much more solid circle of friends you have like a career hopefully and so those things just get better and better with time and um, I know I'm kind of rambling I haven't looked at the chat but I just wanted to share like um, <clears throat> a few of these things and um, another thing we had mentioned was when we were just chatting uh, we were talking about opportunities and how like like if we look back how many opportunities were so obvious now that we just let pass up right like the internet um, used to be something before that you if you wanted to go on the internet if you went on the internet you would go you would have to go on it and find the information right you would it would be something you had to like search, look up, read about. Nowadays, the internet is being fed to you in the form of uh, you know feeds like like Instagram feeds, Twitter feeds, Facebook feeds, like Reddit. Like it's it's like the information is like all plastered there and it's being like given to you or you're getting notifications on your phone so I find that that's pretty interesting how the internet has changed so much um, before it used to just be like you have to find that information <laughs> now it's just like here's a bunch of information and now you have to disseminate it what is noise what do you actually care about and um, in regards to opportunities like I feel like man I'm probably missed out on so many opportunities but the reality is the opportunities never stop existing even to this day 
Like you could have thought like, oh, well, a year ago I got into the mask making business because coronavirus hit. I could have been a billionaire, right? Because everyone's buying masks and I could have just created masks. So people buy masks and I missed that opportunity, right? Okay, but the reality is there's a lot of opportunities now that people uh, have not taken advantage and it will always be that way, right? Just like think about all the apps that are on your phone that didn't exist 10 years ago. And 10 years ago, you could have had the idea for any of these. And there's still going to be things like this. Okay. So um, let me uh, catch up to the chat. Where is my thing? I kind of kind of went on a ramble there. Um, we're at 67 visit viewers. How cool is that? Very cool. Um, anyway, the whole reason I ranted on was like, the whole point of that was that I had a conversation with a stranger that was very fruitful and that would not have been possible in a monologue type of scenario. So having a podcast, doing it with someone else would be very, very cool. <laughs> But it has to be with the right person, with the right energy, where a good amount of information could come out. Anyway, Sebastian, uh, so are you saying something to me? No. Um, let's see. Uh, I have to scroll. Uh, Jess Scree's asking, oh, and also thoughts on Paul Wade and knees over toes guy. Knees over toes guy, I think he's really cool. I think he's on the ball. He's pretty cool. Uh, he's very, he's got like, he, he, he shares like the same exercises, right? Like the Nordic curls, the natural leg curls, and a f like different step ups for your knees and uh, exercises to strengthen your, uh, your hamstrings, which strengthen your knees and all that. And in regards to Paul Wade, um, I don't have any like set, um, I don't have like much opinions about him. I don't know much about him, so I can't really answer. So, <laughs> uh, Nicholas says, what's the worst injury you got from, uh, training? Uh, the worst one was from uh, the tennis elbow I developed, uh, from, it was now probably like 10 years ago and i wrote all about it if you just go my i think it's just if you go like ontronic.org slash tennis elbow dash elbow i believe that will get you there how i got rid of my tennis elbow um this one was uh you know i wrote like everything i learned from it all my lessons so i'm just gonna like tag your name nicholas and link this and also there was another one i had a lot of wrist sprains um so if you type like wrist sprains in my name in google like wrist sprains i'm gonna also go share this with you basically how to deal with your wrist sprains and all the little things to do all the little modifications to do to get it better like that was super helpful for uh, for me in general just to get better where is my video there it is all right cool back to this now um oh and by the way in regards to like my tennis elbow and wrist sprains that i had they're 100 percent better and anytime you get an injury you know i might think like oh that sucks but in reality if you keep at it like keep rehabbing it you're gonna get better you're gonna get stronger than ever before okay so don't let that get to you if you get injured understand that the body is a living breathing organism that is constantly remolding itself regenerating itself if you break a bone your bone is not set in stone your bone is living tissue that is constantly remodeling itself it's constantly breaking down rebuilding and i'm talking about bone not soft tissue like muscles and tendons and whatever 
those regenerate also but even bones do okay so it might take a few weeks a few months whatever it takes but trust the process of the body uh, being able to repair itself okay and you know maybe if you have such a major injury that some things are just not going to be possible anymore that's fine there's always going to be like a thousand other things you can do that will be just as satisfying probably and you just have to work on finding what those are okay all right so and maybe i should read these scroll the chat before i answer so much <laughs> um you got a tendonitis in the elbow okay yeah sh sh shivam like uh read that link I posted uh, you've been resting it for past three months but the pain's not going away um, yeah like like basically remember I have this video on tennis elbow like you should uh, you know just where is it if I just go videos uh, get rid of tennis elbow Get rid of tennis elbow fast with one exercise. The ultimate clickbait title. Um, let me see here. Type your name. Make sure you follow this. Basically, you're going to be doing negative wrist. Uh, negative uh, wrist curls. It's actually negative reverse wrist curls. So, and this is using a flex bar. Anyway, check that video out and just resting, basically just resting, your elbow is not gonna fix it. You have to do these negative or eccentric exercises because the eccentric phase is what jump starts the healing process for the tendons, okay? So, so anyway, um, let's move on. I've been on for like an hour and a half almost. Throat is getting a little tired. <laughs> so I will probably be wrapping this up very soon just to let you guys know because there's only so much I can talk. And look at that scrumptious, scrumptious stretch right there, guys. This is me. <laughs> okay, I'm being silly now. Um, Deepak says, I have chronically stiff traps and neck. I recently started working out and negative chin-ups get rid of them 95% in my experience. Is it because I have a weak mid-back? Probably. Probably. Um, yeah. Like the neck, the neck, the back there, you know, if it's weak. In general, if like you have a lot of stiffness and tightness, it's not just because the it's not just because the muscles are tight. It's muscles are tight and weak. So yeah, it could definitely be um, that. I would also say do these shoulder rolls. Let me find them. So I have a couple videos on shoulder rolls. Like the most, these shoulder roll progressions for uh, increasing scapular mobility. Let me, uh, the, especially the one where it goes to the downward dog version. So I just tagged you, Deepak. Uh, basically, you're, I want you to eventually do shoulder rolls in a downward dog position. And this is like such a good shoulder massage, like a shoulder stretch of some sort. Like you see, it's a very subtle, you can see me doing like a very subtle movement with straight arms and it feels really good. As I say, this is awesome. Trust me. <laughs> so do that and then uh, back to this. <sighs> hey, Antrani, good to see you. Good to see you as well, Ed. <laughs> can you share your routine and tips for good sleep? That's a good question. I don't think I've written anything about this. But like the thing I've, I've noticed that 
where is the chat okay there um can you share your routine and tips for good sleep uh yeah so the thing i found the best is to just like stop using my phone 30 minutes before sleep and even better is like grab a book and just start reading your book um, and if you don't have a book to read find one there's so many find something that seems like it's going to be pretty interesting for whatever you're interested in could be a technical could be a technical book like nonfiction. it could be fiction it could be a novel it could be whatever you really want but like reading a book and going to sleep like you know with a by reading a book is so nice um, and in general I think just if you stop using electronics at least 30 minutes before you sleep it helps a lot um, and it's like of course there's other tips but you know I'm just gonna say like that's like the most helpful thing um, Sebastian says will you get a new dog I think that Medox contributed greatly to a lot of your videos I actually did get a new dog um, I don't know if you could see in this uh, last third last video I made you could kind of see her like you see her her name is Luna Hi, like she is so cute she's so cute um, she's in the other room right now and uh, I'm trying to see where I can show you mm, she's like super cute but like I guess in the beginning you could see her really well uh, there you go she's so cute she's just tiny tiny dog anyway so um, <laughs> tiny dog maybe I'll get her in the other room and just show you guys anyway back to this yoga video where it's foggy right now um, all right uh, Sali Sagdas hello Antronic I love your videos and I do your programs thanks a lot you're welcome are you going to post this live video yes I will post this live video have you have you ever dealt with tendinosis how did you fix it if so um, so uh, like I said before I've had tennis elbow and wrist sprains and tendinosis is basically um, a more severe form of tendinitis and I believe I had tendinosis uh, of my of my elbow probably at some point like it had got to that point probably although I'm not sure it's kind of muddy um, and like you know negative uh, the eccentric like but I don't know what which joint is the issue but negative exercises or eccentric exercises will help jumpstart the healing process and you got to do a high number of reps more like every day for it to actually be helpful okay Adisa says internet gives too many options strangely enough I'd rather have less yeah that's very true so like you know whenever you come to a website and it's like they've shown that if you go on a website and there's like you know uh, the website is selling like five different things to buy um, like five different options what happens is the customer has trouble choosing what which one to choose and they end up not checking out and not buying anything because there's too many options as opposed to you went to that website and they had one product only one option you're more likely to just be like okay that's it because there's not like much more decision making to make <laughs> you buy it you check out so like more options is not necessarily good especially from a marketing perspective okay so uh, great answer as always Antronic just really like the way you think and talk so I think it'd be great if you have a podcast yeah very cool man thanks thank you so much uh, gunshot says hey Antronic just hope you're doing fine thank you thank you I'm doing fine thank you um, I'm just running through this right now because uh, I on Tranik, after doing pull-ups and rows I get a lot of tightness in my upper back in the erector spinae muscles stretching doesn't seem to help um, any ideas I think they may be 
causing by not. So like, I don't know if you use a foam roller, but you should use a foam roller for your upper back. Like it's so good. Um, like I have videos on that, on how to do it. But I also have like a really good Reddit post on it. And you can use the a lacrosse ball as well. Where is it? So like this is like me using it for the upper back, you know, like this is the formula for the upper back. Really good. And you know, I could use it for many parts of your body, but where is the one for the and you can also get like a lacrosse ball, it's really good. Lacrosse ball. And you can also increase the effectiveness of your um increase the effectiveness of your foam roller by putting a little bit of weight on you and you'll see in a moment what's going on there this is my dog medax and i we're gonna use the foam roller together so it's a medax weighted foam roller so this actually helps coax your back muscles even more when you have a, some weight on top not necessary obviously just like it's nice okay okay that's a little silly but it's nice actually yeah i'll just leave that there um uh jerome says uh i really love your work you give a lot of, to the fitness community your programs are great but i find the website not so user friendly any chance to eventually have an app or something yeah this is something that i have to work on this is like website stuff is really overwhelming um i really have to just uh, revamp this fortunately the user experience is okay for if you're on mobile i know it could be revamped a lot uh, if you're on desktop i will try to have an app of some sort i know that requires uh, me to hire a programmer and like go through a whole new route so maybe yeah, one day i have to do that i definitely have to do that but thank you for the feedback and let me go back to there something i've been struggling with is sternum pain after uh due to dips i've worked hard on my form but the pain is still there so unfortunately you have to just take a break um this is one of those things like you're getting sternum pain it's usually you know, costochondritis and that's just like tendons tendons and ligaments at your breastbone connecting to your chest muscles that are just not strong enough yet and you just have to take a break until it's pain free and then start doing dips again hopefully when you're pain free and doing it ease into it and hopefully it's not painful again and if it is painful you might have to just take a break again and and just keep repeating this process until it's pain free okay but just ease into it every time you get back into it and don't overdo it like don't overdo your dips to failure uh, and if you feel any sort of pain coming up definitely take a break um, because it will only get worse so if you've been pushing through the pain it's only gonna take it make it take a lot longer for the recovery to occur okay Deepak says thanks a lot I will do the shoulder rolls good all right um, I, Arif says, I tore my meniscus slightly five months ago, but medical care available to me is pretty bad, I understand. So since it hasn't improved much, I went to a better hospital, and that's what they told me. Oh, okay. Yeah, about the eccentric muscles, was it? Or eccentric exercises? In the meantime, any bodyweight exercises to improve leg strength or muscles to support my knee? Um, this is... Uh, tough to say 
um, I would say look up like uh, so it's hard to say because me stuff is very sensitive and I don't want to make like a suggestion that's gonna mess with your knee um, try to look up like glute bridges one leg glute bridges to strengthen your hamstrings uh, and glutes but if it causes any pain to your knee then you have to not do that exercise but I would look up like one leg glute bridges or just glute bridges in general and see how that how that is and that will take care of the back side and then uh, split squats look up split squats uh, that will help strengthen the anterior chain the the quadriceps and all that on the front end and that may be helpful as well so um, let's see one second here cool now I'm just going to run through the chat because uh, it's been an hour and a half and I'm pretty much going to end the live stream soon. Oh, this stretch looks scrumptious, guys. So, look at this shot. It's nice. Anyway, so. Um, oh, nice. You've been jumping rope for an hour and a half a week. But I cannot squat deeply or twist my knee. Uh, knee. Uh, yes. Yes. Do the split squats. Do the blue glute bridges and yeah yeah Sebastian the RTO support hold video with Medox is definitely really good any tips for knee stability um, again that's a tough one I'm not entirely sure if you can ride a bike go for that that will help a lot <laughs> Uh, Jos Jos Josue de Filippo says, "Hey, I'm curious about your name. What does Antronic mean? It's an Armenian name. It means uh, it's usually um, it's almost always it means first son. So like if if you are the first son, <laughs> you might get the name Antronic in the Armenian culture." yes okay um hi i play baseball and my coaches i need to get my forearm stronger does squeezing a tennis ball help yeah it sh it can help um however like there's a like what is the forearm need to get stronger for um hanging from a bar can help a lot um so if you but if hanging from a bar is very easy and you could hang for more than like a couple minutes then your forearm strength is pretty good so another thing you could do is try hanging from a pull-up bar with one arm that's going to be much harder so again if hanging from a bar with two arms is easy or if it's not easy do it until it's easy and then when it becomes easy you could try hanging from one hand and building that up. However, another option is hang a rope, uh, not a rope, it, will, it could be a rope or a towel from your pull-up bar or both, you know, with both uh, two towels so that you can hang from a towel or rope with your hands off the bar and that will strengthen your grip a lot okay so those are some easy ways to strengthen your forearm strength uh, it doesn't require much equipment you have two towels i'm sure and you if you have a pull-up bar hopefully or a tree branch you could find to throw it over or something you can just grip onto that and so that will help a lot okay so a uh, tennis ball might be too easy but it's something you know the problem with the tennis ball is the more you keep doing that the weaker the tennis ball gets so that's one way of doing it uh, but in, try to incorporate like this towel grip progression so so uh, yeah 
So yeah, Bobo, bo- bo, you might need to take a break from dips and support holds until your chest gets better. Um, and when it do- when it is completely better, like maybe you're pain free tomorrow, maybe wait like a few more days or a week to really make sure it's hundred percent pain free, and then ease into it. Okay. Um. <laughs> Cool. Uh, Copy says, hi, Antronic. Just wanted to say thank you for all your content. You're a big help, big help for a lot of people. I'm still learning a great deal. Thanks to you. Keep up the good work. Thank you so much. I will keep, uh, keep on keeping on and your comments are very helpful. Nice. Both of you bought the rings routine and you like it. It's very good. All right. Yes. You have a good week as well, Arif. Um, I think I covered everything just remember do your yoga videos uh, do my yoga videos and uh, stretch your hips do this handstand drill I shared recently Um, the heel pulls Uh, do my online you know join my online coaching if you're interested in uh, optimize optimizing your current plan or creating a whole new plan Uh, or getting you know form check criticisms and that's about it guys i hope that was uh helpful i'm gonna end the chat right there um oh vedant you're asking a question okay one last question and answer what does it mean to squeeze the abs while coming down from the top of the bridge pose you say it feels great but i'm unable to figure it out you literally Just like squeeze your abs. Can you see me in the screen here? Like, like, imagine I'm gonna, someone's gonna, a child is gonna punch you in the stomach. What would you do? What would you do? You would squeeze your abs, right? Just do that. That's all that means. And so there's nothing more to it. You go into the bridge pose squeeze your abs and then come down one vertebrae at a time all right the more you squeeze the abs if you keep your abs tight it makes it so it comes down in segments very very well and so yeah that's about it (laughs) uh thank you sebastian uh you're saying you're telling me thank you for hosting the q a i like it and Thank you as well for being such a good supporter and being involved in the chat and making uh, helping to have this conversation. Um, and you're welcome, Vedant. And I will see you guys uh, soon. Thank you so much for your support and thank you so much for watching. Please give this video a thumbs up and share it with whoever you think might be beneficial and share my. Uh, whatever you think is beneficial you know do your yoga guys do your yoga do your strength training keep growing keep pushing life is a struggle but you're gonna conquer it and kick its ass all right goodbye and have a great